Uh, hello everyone. Uh, this is uh, a new video in my series. Uh, the main aim of uh, this video simply is introducing a new analytical method for finding turning points without using differentiation. Apparently, this method seems to be quite new. Uh, usually, for example, in any turning point, you can have either maximum or maybe you can have minimum. Throughout history, uh, from Greek mathematicians to current days, there has been many ideas and theories that have helped us in understanding nature of uh, real and abstract worlds. But still, certainly the way is long away and no sign of the light at the end of the tunnel to see the absolute reality. We are hoping to reach that, uh, but hopefully we will reach one day, but still no sign. Among all of these ideas, one of the most fascinating concepts is the use of infinitesimal, a uh, very, very small amount. This is really an interesting point in which uh, took place in history. And then this led us to introduce the concept of uh, differentiation and obviously later on, uh, how you find maximum or minimum of certain function. By nature, uh, we as human beings, we would like always to maximize or to minimize things. For example, we would like to maximize, let us say, our study here to achieve the maximum grade or to minimize, for example, the cost for any businesses in which we are doing and many more. Hardly you can have any uh, academic science here in which you do not have maximum or minimum or even the concept of differentiation. Uh, but in this video, I'm going to introduce a new method for looking at the way in which you find turning point and hopefully you will enjoy. Uh, a bit of history. Uh, there is no doubt that the principle of calculus and using the concept of infinitesimal to introduce a model to formulate gradient and rate of change of function in which this is well known as uh, df uh, divided by dx or df with respect to dx. Uh, this Differentiation played a very, very important role of history. Hardly you can find any signs from fluid mechanics, from physics, from elasticity, and etc., in which you do not have uh, the use of differentiation, even in mathematics itself. For example, solving differential equations, in which contains many differentiations, and so on. Now, there is one little point I just would like to raise it here. Who first introduced df by dx? Um, it is not very known here. There are debates. It is either Newton or Leibniz. Uh, then, although to, to, to this study here, this doesn't matter who developed it, uh, but apparently it seems uh, many historians are agreed on the fact maybe this is coming from both or perhaps both they developed it independently uh, but certainly here do not forget there are other parts of mathematical analysis in which they have produced the basis of this calculus uh, they have been introduced well before the idea of the differentiation uh, this is calculus model. I think uh, from basics of calculus, we already know how the concept of differentiation comes about. From, for example, limiting uh, the gradient of the chord to the gradient of the tangent. And finally here, for example, as this limit, for instance here, the difference between the two points will become eventually zero, in which dy by dx Practically here is the limit of this small infinitesimal of y divided by small infinitesimal of x. 
and then even initially uh, at the start cal start calculus was called infinitesimal uh, calculus uh, this is for example normally the concept of differentiation in which we use for maximum and minimum the reason is because the gradient of the tangent to the curve at these points or this point here is parallel to the x-axis and simply means, for example, here the gradient is zero. Uh, but I'm going to introduce totally a different idea here, in which you will see shortly. What is this new idea? Analysis of this method. Uh, for example, here, what we assume here, assume that you have got a curve, for instance, here, has got a minimum somewhere. And then if I assume that there is a line, and this line here, I call it local symmetry. So it means this is symmetrical of the curve here of two points, which are very, very close to the point at this minimum, or even the same idea can be applied to maximum. Then it means the turning point although in this case he is maximum, but the same concept can be applied to minimum, at some x which is equal to z can be achieved by solving this equation. Solving this equation simply means you have got some delta. Delta is a positive quantity in which you have from either sides of the minimum or maximum. And assume that the minimum takes place in my example here at z then obviously the point before, which is z minus delta, and the point after, z plus delta. Then if I assume, for instance here, when delta becomes very, very small, then this two will be the same. Because this is obviously a property of the symmetry. If, if this is the line of symmetry in which is passing through the minimum. And this is the main heart of my analysis in which I named the grand equation. Then if, for example, you solve this equation for z, and that will be the solution of that, and then this gives you the turning point, which I will give maybe a few examples here to clarify. Now, uh, testing for minimum or maximum here, there is another way here in which we could normally in conventional way when we test for maximum or minimum, we use the second differentiation, but certainly here, my aim from this work is I'm not going to use the differentiation. There is another way in which I look at it. I introduce a new equation here, and this new equation is phi of delta. The phi of delta basically coming from the fact of the difference between my function in which I introduced it from the first part at plus and then take away at minus. If this value comes out to be greater than zero, then it means my point is minimum. And if this point comes out to be less than zero, then obviously this is maximum. This is similar to the second differentiation, but obviously there is no sign of any second differentiation here. And then if this comes out to be zero, definitely there is no conclusion in which we will come to this as special cases. Now, this is a simple example. This is a very well-known quadratic equation in which we learn at, at basics of calculus. Okay, so it means if I'm using my grand equation here, then this is my equation. And then I'm not going to take the limit until I reach to the end, which is normal. And then finally here, I reach to a point z equals two. Then it means a turning point takes place when x equals to two. Because z is the point when x equals to two. Then through differentiation, still you get the same value. Testing, and my zeta function, which is g of x, is x minus two. And this x minus two here, if I find phi of delta, then g of x plus delta minus g of x minus delta, if I work out this, then it comes out to be equal to two times delta. But by definition, at the start of my analysis, alpha, delta here is positive, then obviously this is a positive number, and then this is a minimum, in which we already know that this has got a minimum value. 
Second example, this is an example on cubic function and exactly I'm applying the same thing. So if you would like to understand it a bit more, you can pause the video and then work out this by yourself and later on reach to this conclusion, which is my grand equation here. And then finally, if I divide by delta and take in delta approaching zero, then delta squared certainly will become zero, then I'm ending with this equation. And this equation now has got two solutions. One solution to x equals to two or z one is equal to two, in which it gives a value, which is turning point, but we do not know yet if this is maximum or minimum. And the same idea here, z is equal to, for example, minus two over three. Now, testing. Uh, this is interesting here because now the, certainly my zeta function will be equal to this. And then obviously here, if I'm working out phi of the delta, and then I will introduce two different phi's here in which I name them phi one and phi two. And then if you analyze this, and then finally here, for example, you get an expression which is this, okay? These two expressions are the same here, certainly. Now I substitute my first x in which it was z1, then I notice that this value of my function comes out to be positive. Then this is an indication that it is a minimum. And then if I substitute my second point, then this comes out to be negative, which indicate that this is maximum in which is consistent, obviously, here with the nature of the curve. These are very simple examples. Now, another example, this example here, I just introduced it on purpose because it doesn't have neither minimum or non maximum or not even turning point. This is x plus two divided by x minus one. This is my grand equation here. If I'm using the same concept, z minus delta equals to the function as z plus delta or vice versa. And then if you simplify this, which I'm leaving for uh, the reader here to simplify this, and then you will see that you will end with an equation in, not, in which non-solvable, solvable for z, you can't solve it, then obviously there is no turning. And even if you use differentiation, you will reach to the same conclusion. Now, conclusion, okay, here, apparently, it seems infinitesimal, infinitesimal still is used, but in a totally different way from usual conventional. So, uh, it seems that we cannot escape uh, from the infinitesimal calculus here. Secondly, here, this method suffers the same problem as usual. So it means if, for example, this comes out to be zero in the same way as we have conventionally, if the second differentiation is zero, then it means we have to use different ways to identify if, there is, uh, if this is maximum or minimum or maybe perhaps inflection point. Uh, the next point here is the method is not yet fully complete. And then I'm planning, hopefully, to develop it further. Uh, this is the end. Uh, I hope you enjoyed the video and learned something new. And any comments, any ideas here, please do email me on this email. Thanks for watching.